Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. You know what? That's very inclusive, <laughs> and I agree. Hello, everybody. Hello, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Y'all. <laughs> y'all. Welcome to Stay F. Humpkins, your quarantine podcast. Oh, who's this character? I'm Janie Haddad Tompkins. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm Paul F. Tompkins. He's a comedian. She's an actor, obviously. <laughs> oh my God, no! Oh no! On your reel. Oh no! I don't want to be actress. <laughs> um, we're a married couple. We're quarantined together. Yeah. In California, with recording equipment. Mm-hmm. Once a week, we have a date night where we sit down and pour ourselves a drink. <laughs> And we allow the world in on our conversation. <laughs> That's very succinct, and I think you nailed it. Welcome to this private glimpse. Welcome to hell. <laughs> oh my God. Well, now, it's Friday night. It's Friday night. This is a special Friday night because tomorrow is my birthday. Tomorrow's Paul's birthday, you guys. I, I would not announce that otherwise. I'm not. I'm oh. not very... Yeah, I'm he's not, not very. I'm not very announce you about he's my not birthday. A, he's not a. He's not big on it. But I do want to shout out a wife of mine <laughs> because as a gift, she. I always, gave it one night early because there's a reason I gave yes. it one night. Okay. She always complains that I'm very hard to to <laughs> shop for. I'm not the only one, y'all. It's You've a brainwashed other people into common thinking Common complaint. No, it's that you are hard to shop for. But here's the thing. The reason I'm hard to shop for is I don't like being shopped for. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really the reason. And I I am content with no gifts. Um, because whenever you need something, you just get it. Exactly. You don't, you're never like, oh, I need this thing. Christmas is coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I need this thing. Yes, like, I'm not a hint dropper. And then it shows up. And yeah. you, he's like, yeah, I took care of it. I, bought, yeah, I a, got it from I'm myself. I'm grown up and I have a job. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not like, oh, my but that paper makes, route. I'm so close. <laughs> it makes it like so hard to buy for him, though. But the easy, the, here's what makes it easier. I don't want anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes it hard to buy. That also makes it hard to buy. But we. So we we don't give gifts. We don't give gifts like on our anniversary. We don't give gifts every every year. No, well, we'll, we'll mark the occasion though. Yes, yeah, like yeah. we'll have a dinner or something. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we give Christmas presents. Friends. But birthdays are not like We're, neither one of us are big into birthdays. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's fine. I, me personally, if you never got me something for my birthday, it's fine. I know, but it, it's it's. But like, I know you like to get something for because yeah, I like, like to a get little, something for you. Sometimes yes. it's a little thing. Sometimes it's a big thing. You know, it yeah. just depends on like if there's something going on where I'm like, oh my gosh, he'll never guess that this thing is going to happen. This idiot, he has no idea. <laughs> Simple fool. <laughs> and you and you nailed it this year. I got. I did. I well. She got. Here's what Janie did. I've been brainwashed by certain online ads. This was. <laughs> But it, it really worked because... I mean, I have been inundated. She, she warned me today that my I had, had a gift, I had a gift on its way and that I had to be ready for it. I was saying it's... I'm going to get... I said, your gift is coming today and it has to be presented today. Yeah. Even though tomorrow is the day. Yes. But exactly. And I was like, there's a reason for it and I didn't say. Yes. And it turns out what she got me was... Uh, cheesesteaks from Philadelphia I via Gold Belly. Gold Belly, which is the Postmates for the country. <laughs> yes. And it was such a nice surprise. And I was skeptical, too. I was like, how does it, how can you get a perishable what from... You, who can do... What, uh, no, what no, is this no, sorcery? No pony can travel that fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I was about Gold Belly. Yeah. But it worked. And we had them Heated them up in the oven, came with a side of cheese whiz to pour on top. <laughs> it was delicious. Wit whiz. Whiz wit. Oh, whiz wit. Now, yeah. why is it that way? Because you, you're, you're saying I want the cheese and I want it with onions. Oh, there's onions left off. Yes. So you're saying whiz wit, onions. Yeah. But the onions is silent. 
It's a silent. In Philadelphianese. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Got it. Yeah. Okay. They and were good, though. They were very good. Very also, good. Um, you know how, like, the pandemic started and everyone's, like, freaking out because the economy has ground to, yeah. to a halt? Except for, I read about it. Yeah. Except for, like, 600 people that are billionaires. Because mm-hmm. there's only, like, 600 billionaires. Somehow they're making more money. By the minute. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like curious, like, is Goldbelly one of them? I'm sure they're not billionaires, but like, but you know how like certain businesses like Zoom, like that took off because everyone had to use Zoom and stuff. And like, I feel like Goldbelly was like, y'all, this is our time to shine because they like flooded. I mean, like I'm like, even my mom Mm -hmm. knows what Goldbelly is. (laughs) Do you think it's that people are, are craving their foods from back home yes. because it's yes. primarily yes because my mom told me the other day because because also my mom shout out to my mom she did pitch in on the <laughs> shout out to nikki <laughs> she did pitch in on the on the cheesesteak she yeah. wanted to be a part of it and um i was like it's gold belly and, I says, and she's like oh i know i um at the beginning of the pandemic i ordered some lobster and i was like wait what <laughs> mm. where'd she order lobster from yeah and i was like oh my god like did you just get like were you drunk or something? Like what? And she <laughs> and then she said, I got real homesick because I was like um, online and I saw friends from my childhood and I wanted a cherry pie and I ordered a cherry pie. Wow. And it was not good. So she oh, I don't, oh. it didn't oh, work no. out. <laughs> that sucks. That one didn't travel well. But I was like, okay. Like, even my mom, like, knows how about gold belly? Okay. That means it's not cool anymore. <laughs> Once moms know about it, forget it. It's <laughs> over. I don't know. She's ahead of the curve a lot of times. Is she really? Well, like, okay, for example, like, she watched Daily Show, like, before any, like, before people watch Daily Show. Oh, I was just telling somebody the other day how your mom and stepdad knew who I was before you did. Oh yeah. My mom and stepdad had seen your special on HBO. Yeah. Before I met you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also my mom, she um she was like a ground zero um wire person. She watched mm-hmm. the wire in real time. Right. I should not have said ground zero. Today is nine eleven. <laughs> It's really wrong. Yeah. I think it was on my mind and that it was like a sub oh, it's always on subconscious. I'm always we about never it. we're not supposed to forget. We're not supposed to forget. Um anyway, my mom watched The Wire in real time and and I was like, "Oh my god, have you seen The Wire?" And she's like, "Yeah, I watched it's amazing." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um your mom is great though. I love her. Yeah, her my mom is good. My mom is good. Oh, downgrade from great. My mom is great. <laughs> I don't like the word great. What Really? I just read that a certain person in the White House uses it a lot. And so it kind of bummed me out. Like the cook? <laughs> no. <laughs> he who shall not be. Sure. <laughs> um, uh, but it was a great, that was a great gift, honey. Well, you loved it. You, we ate the cheesesteaks. First of all, we're stuffed. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Second of all, I was listening to my country music. Paul was making fun of it right before I turned it. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, you were all like, why are you doing these things on me? I or was whatever. just having some fun. <laughs> it was, uh, who was that? Lucinda Williams? Who was no, it? that was Holly, William- Holly Williams. Holly Williams? Yeah. They're all Williams. Well, and then there was Lucinda Williams earlier. Yes. I was playing yeah. some like yes. Lucinda. And now here we are. Oh. Do you remember Lucinda Williams? Like, she got in trouble, sort of-ish. Like... There, there's like that big profiler on her, like in the New Yorker, and she was like, "Fuck Faith Hill" or whatever. <laughs> y'all, y'all remember no, that? No, I don't remember that. I heard, I was like living in New York at the time, and I love Lucinda Williams. Like mm-hmm. I have for years and years, and and like she's you know she's interesting, and like her dad was like the poet laureate or something of like Louisiana or something crazy, and um and uh, but like she's you know she's kind of. So, salty or something. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, lives hard, kind of, I think. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And they did this big profile on the New Yorker, and she's like, fuck, Faith Hill. 
Why? Just like her because type of music or her personal? I think like that kind of. I'm gonna mess this up, but I think it's it was like the music and the and the marketing and the packaging, right. like because like I like if you follow country music, there is a bit of like, oh, that's not real country or this is real, you know, like there's like a, there's a machine, you know, there's a Nashville machine that decides yes. what the what the the real music is. And I like all of like I like all of it. Like some of it is cheesy, but I also like TV movie. Like I watch, you know, <laughs> like made for TV movies too. So, but I also watch documentaries. So, like I just feel like I understand that sort of like and also it's like hard for women to get on country music radio. That's been like a thing mm-hmm. over the years. Um it's not a very like diverse community, although they're trying to be more inclusive and stuff like that, which I think Cowboy it, Troy. <laughs> That kid, his thing was like the what's the song the um, dance he does. I honestly the, don't know. I only know him from the, the, country music. No, he's got award the, shows. It's the dance. It's that thing. I'm, the boot scoot boogie. No, it's the. <laughs> oh God! What you, you, for the listener, Janie is doing this dance <laughs> in her chair. She's grabbing her invisible belt buckle. It's a, and it scoots <laughs> and this way. She's doing and like a scoots, slide. It's like an it's Axl Rose like slide, but country. This way and it scoots. No, it's more like a <laughs> like a do si do. Yeah, like a like a like a like a two step, uh, kind of line dance like thing. All right, we'll look, you it look it up. We'll look it up. Anyway, I'm, I wasn't even thinking of Cowboy Troy. I was not even thinking of. Oh him. come on, you weren't thinking of Cowboy Troy. Well, there's lots of like, uh, you know, in in like the roots music world, it's a it's a more diverse like more diverse artists in that world. Yes, and like folk and mu- and roots and stuff. Yeah. And not so much like the mainstream, but the mainstream is like, I don't know. They have like all that like kind of bro country or like that bro yeah. stuff. That stuff I'm not into. Yeah. Every now and then I'll pick one. I got one. a barbecue stain on my white t-shirt. <laughs> that's a real thing. That's a real thing. It's from a, that's, that's from, from a, there was a commercial for country radio. I don't know what station, but it was yeah, here in LA. Who's that one? Like Brooks and Dunn or something? I have no, no, it's just one dude. And that, you know, it's like one of those commercials where they play like a little snippet of a bunch of different songs. Right. And that is the one. I've never heard the whole song. <laughs> no. I don't remember why, who did it. Why would you? Why would? But first of all, how, is, <laughs> how has Tide detergent not licensed that <laughs> exactly. one? <laughs> because. But to this day, I remember. I got a barbecue stain on my white t-shirt. I will like ironically like some stuff like that every now and then. Just personally. One of those like, list country list songs. I love a list song. I even do a mm-hmm. list song. What was the one about like, it's so obvious. He's like, he just like wrote it so that women will throw their panties at them. About like his mama crying or something. He was like. His mama crying, which one? And he's like, he's like, I like Friday night. I pray to church on Friday night. Like the lights come on. Oh, and the, is it, I believe that one. Yeah, or, what's yeah, that one? Like. Uh, Luke somebody, right? Yeah, that guy, Luke. Uh, he's like tall. He's yeah, like yeah, He yeah. wins like all the awards. Yeah. I'm like, this is so clearly manufactured. Yeah, I believe every, every mama ought to qualify for sainthood. Yeah, that's the one. That's <laughs> yeah. the one, that's the one, that's the one. I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not like. But they make, they make that song every I, other year. One funny. of those songs comes out. I think that song is funny. Oh. Um, wait. That song makes me we laugh. Need to, we need to talk about. How. This song. Oh, we watch country awards shows. Oh yeah, I love whenever country- they're on. Oh my god, we've seen so many of them. It's my fault because I. Love but it's at the point now the where award where I'm like, it's just like a known thing that we're going to watch it. If it's on, we're going <laughs> if there's to watch one it. on, I, I get so excited. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, uh, uh, you know, tonight's the and there's like variations on them. Like in my personal opinion, I kind of like the CMAs the best. Hmm. You know? Yeah. And then the last year, CMAs was the best one because they did, like, it was, like, all about women. And they had a giant purple vagina as the set. <laughs> they did. I don't remember. And that. also, I feel like they're always, like, signaling what they're trying to do, like, in country music. Wait, is that the one where Reba, where Reba, Reba. did fancy and she ripped she off, like, five outfits. different outfits? Yes. Yeah. Oh, but, y'all, if y'll have not seen, we had to. And she was walking video. down the birth canal? She was, she came out of the vulva. 
<laughs> of the per- she and, crowned and the reason and the per- <laughs> but, but the I guarantee you the reason the vagina was purple is because it's like red states and blue states I guarantee uh, what? you what like I think country music has you like really thought about this yeah I, I have I have well first of all I would have just dismissed <laughs> it as a purple vagina no 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 <laughs> no no there's so much there's so much underneath there's so much underneath like being so ominous like follow the money <laughs> It's like, okay, here's the thing. Did y'all watch Nashville when it was on? Not the movie from the 70s. I mean, the ABC network television show. ABC and then later country Country music music television television. because ABC canceled it. First of all, that show is awesome. It's Kelly Curry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who wrote Thelma and Louise. That's right. So like her whole thing is like female empowerment, blah, blah, blah. And she was trying to make this show for network television that had all these layers between like female like bosses, like strong female women, strong female, you know what I mean? Like (laughs) female artists, strong female women, ladies, (laughs) Um, like there because it was about like these two country singers and one was sort of like. She kind of represented like the coastal elite because she came from like, you know, fancy pants Nashville society, mm-hmm. and was more old school. Yeah, and already ha- was like she was like the queen, an established the queen. superstar. Yes, and then there was like this scrappy trailer park trash girl who had to fight her like for every, you know, step of the way of her life, mm-hmm. who was like. Kind of like a one, like an overnight, like like someone that would have come from like I don't know, like an American Idol or so, like yeah. a I don't know, I don't know Carrie Underwood's story, but like mm-hmm. maybe something. Oh, maybe she was more like a Miranda Lambert kind sure. of yes person. So one was, was played like by real Connie, sassy. Connie Britton. Yeah, Connie Britton was the queen. And the other one was played by Hayden Panettiere. Yeah, and Hayden Panettiere, and like this show was like so. I loved it because not only was it country music, soap opera, you know, whatever, but it was like trying to say like women who are ambitious and careerist and stuff, like they don't need to be at each other's throats. Like it, but it's hard not to be because everything is perilous all the time. Yes. And because there are fewer openings for women Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh they feel like they are pitted against each other because they're limited slots yes so they had this like kind of complicated rivalry frenemy thing Mm -hmm. and but on top of it besides the awesome costumes and the you know sassy dialogue (laughs) kelly Corey is married to t-bone burnett and he is like an amazing producer of like roots country you know, yes. full, what, all that stuff. Legend, Americana. Legendary music producer. Legendary music, like Americana, I guess mm. you would call it. And so the music on it was awesome. And all the actors were like super good looking. They dressed them like great. They they all could sing really well. Mm-hmm. Maybe, except for one star in it. But she was still good. She was like acted it and like did her job yes. with it. Yes, yes, yes. In yes. my opinion. But like... um. I don't know. It's just I just like love that show, and so because of that, I feel like I learned <laughs> that the country music industry is a much bigger corporate kind of commercial thing than yeah anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I see like the purple vagina on the mm-hmm. CMAs and and they're like making an effort to be more inclusive mm-hmm. with diversity and stuff like. I'm pretty sure, like, they are like, we don't want to exclude anybody. We want everyone to listen to this music. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. We want, yeah. you know, like, this is not about, they have, like, no politics in it, really, because it's like. Well, yes and no. I mean. Well, there is, like, Guns and Jesus or whatever. Yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah. There, there, is, there is a certain, they know who their, their core base is. There are certainly, I, I think that like the, the award shows are like, they put on a face where they say, everyone's welcome, you know, mm-hmm. we'll throw Beyonce on there and, 
you know, stuff like that. But they, then they do that. Then people are like, well, I guess we're not going to see uh, Trey, Trey Atkins at the BET Awards. <laughs> well, and, you know, country music fans, I mean, like they did blacklist um, Dixie Chicks. Yeah. yeah for yeah, yeah. years. For saying that George Bush sucks. Oh, and it was, <laughs> they're the chicks now. They they That's changed right. their name from Dixie Chicks That's to right. the Chicks. Um, and, the, you know, in this in this year of, you know, social awareness. What about Dixie Cups? What do they do? <laughs> Are they just cups? I don't know. I don't remember that band. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the Dixie Cups? Dixie Cups, not a band. Oh, you mean the cups, <laughs> yes. the actual cups. Yes. Well, can't they just be solo cups? I mean, can't they just be like rally cups or whatever? <laughs> are they the same company? Who makes the red solo? Oh, that's solo. That's solo, solo. I think, right? Yeah. People are named Dixie. You know that, right? Dixie Carter. Any other examples? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure there are others. <laughs> yeah. She's I mean, just, but you she's can't just choose Chick your Carter now. <laughs> the chicks, Carter. <laughs> the chicks, Carter. You w- worked with um, Delta Burke. Delta Burke. Yes. And I, I worked... just like I'm like so I never got to meet Delta Burke. Oh. Paul worked on a sitcom with Delta Burke, and I, I loved her I'm so like, much. She was awesome. She's a real character. She's man. a character, right? We yeah, we worked together on a show called Dag, which ran for one season. It was a sitcom starring David Allen Greer and Delta Burke. And Dag st- stood for. David Allen Greer, because his yes. show was centered around him. Yes, but his character was named Jerome Daggett, and everyone called him Dag. Okay. See? I've never seen this show, by the way, y'all. <laughs> I have I have all of them on VHS. <laughs> Which means they we can't a, watch them, because we, I know, we I have to have do them, one of those legacy boxes. Yeah, I have to have them converted, because they, they would give me the episode <laughs> every week. They would give you the episode to take home with you. Did they really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Wait, was it every week or was it just at the end of the season? And I can't remember. Y'all should know that. Okay, so Paul worked with um, Delta Burke. Yeah. And she's married to Gerald McCraney. McCraney. Yes, major dad. Yeah. But when you were on the sitcom, you like the cast of characters were these other actors, and y'all kind of like trauma bonded a little because the, uh, or just because it got canceled. So. Suddenly, yes. So it was like kind of this sad experience where y'all all like loved each other. Well, we trauma bonded over the trauma, but before that, we had a great time. <laughs> you had a good time, and we, we all clicked. y'all liked each other. Yes, we really did. And so really they did. are all still friends. And this was yeah. like been what, like twenty years yeah. ago? Yeah, it was two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I've got to meet all of those actors since, like. Well, you met uh, Emmy Laybourne. Yeah, Emmy Laybourne Panovich now. Um, Leah Young and um, uh, Lauren Tom. Yes. Uh, and, and we know Lauren's husband very well now, too. Yes. Kurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we love Leah's husband. And I've, not, I've, I've only met Emmy's husband that one time because, oh, so get this. So Emmy and her husband live back east. And so when I met them, when I met Emmy, mm-hmm. they were just visiting. But her brother lives out here. He's a television writer. In fact, he coincidentally works with one of my best friends on Zoe's extraordinary playlist. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. 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 My friend, Samantha, mm-hmm. who, by the way, I just found that today she was nominated for some women in media, women in media. Award. Well, that's awesome. Just today. Like that. she found out. That's like, great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, or her episode, I should say her episode. Oh, I'm less impressed. Now. Same difference. <laughs> so anyway, so they were like, we're going to move back to, um, Los Angeles, we're so excited, blah, 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 blah. And then we had dinner with all of them, all of the, those couples we met, it, like f- the four couples. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called the, right. me- the people refer to that night as the, the, four- the meeting <laughs> the of the four couples. And they had just moved here. And I was like, oh, this is great. And I was like, oh, we should have coffee. Me and Emmy, we're going to maybe have coffee, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then the um, shutdown happened. <laughs> It was right before. It was like right before. That was like our last one of they our They moved here last big down. night out. I it was think. one of our last big nights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but they they got here and then they had the corn. They had the corn. Yeah. Um yeah, but they're they're great people and you know, I miss my friend Stephen Dunham who was uh oh, yeah. my best buddy on the cast who passed away uh and that a handful was of years ago. Very sudden. It was like a heart attack. Yeah, yeah. It was a heart attack and he was He was young. He was young. I think he had just turned 50 or was about to turn 50 and and it was just out of nowhere, 
you know, he was a, he was a healthy guy, and it just happened. Yeah. And, um, he was a great he was a great guy. He and I used to. We had so much fun together. We made each other laugh all day. And he would come into my... I had a little TV in my dressing room uh, that I could hook up to uh, uh, to a cable in the wall. And I could watch TV. And I could also get, because of this cable, <laughs> um, rehearsal feeds from different studios. No. Oh, yes. my God. That's my dream. Did I never tell you about this? I don't think I've heard this. We used to, we used to watch... The rehearsal feed of the soap opera Passions. Okay, what what lot were y'all on? We were on CBS Radford. Okay, okay. Passions, of course, was a a more a, like at the time it was a modern soap opera. Yeah, they had like a little person in the cast. They well because he play, he played a possessed doll. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Passions had like like a, a a dark shadows kind of thing. It was a modern dark shadows. I don't. They had like I a never supernatural really element to it. Passions, but it did have sort of a. I remember. I never did either, but for this feed. <laughs> <laughs> How did it go when you watched his rehearsals? Like it was. We were fascinated by it because you'd see them. You'd see them acting and then you'd see them like uh, uh, break and they're taking notes and all that stuff. And they're just like standing there hanging out. And it was like, even though we did the same thing as they did, essentially. But I would love, here's what I would do, because <laughs> I would love to just like sw- like channel surf to find like the most difficult actor on the entire lot. Like the one that is like, <laughs> do I have to stand here? It doesn't make sense. Like. She's ten feet away from me. Wouldn't we be three feet away from each other? We did not get that many, unfortunately. Oh, that would have been like my favorite. Patrick's is the only other one that I remember because we would see our feed, you know. Our yeah, and then feed. like they could see y'all. Presumably, yeah. if anyone cared to. <laughs> oh my god, I would be like back there, like like I worked for the CIA, like combing the tapes. I'd be like. <laughs> I had a little bit of a bar in my dressing room. Of course you did. <laughs> and on Fridays, Fridays were tape days. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And there was one night that it was so long. And Stephen and I were were in scenes early in the show. We were not in the rest of the show. And just so that the sh- that, that our listeners know, this this particular sitcom that Paul was on was a multicam yeah. sitcom. So the way that those work it, is that you shoot the entire episode in one night when, yeah. in one night so in front would, of a live studio audience. Yeah. So it's rehearsal not Monday through up. Thursday yeah, yeah. and then Friday up. night would be the show. So they're rehearsing on a sound stage. Yeah. And it was, it was a, it was a dream. Like it was so much fun. Yeah. It was so much. Multicams are so much fun and we all had a great time together. So this one night, you know, Stephen and I were done early and we, but we had to hang out because we were going to record like the the holiday greeting from the cast <laughs> right after the episode was done sure but, you know they, they were going to let the audience go and, and you're like in we christmas be, sweaters and stuff no 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 we were oh, just okay. in our regular shit okay. but we were going to like just look at the camera and say from all of us a dag to all of you at home happy holidays or whatever and we got drunk <laughs> and we <laughs> We what were, time of night was it? Like midnight, one a.m. Oh shit! Yeah, it was somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Friday yeah, night, yeah. two a.m. You yeah. worked all week because the taping takes several hours. Yes, yes, you know, even though it's yes. a half hour show, and uh, yeah, we were lit and we were having the best time. <laughs> the best time. Oh my god! Because we sat in my dressing room and watched the show, and we're drinking. Oh my god. <laughs> That is, uh, I would love to see like some of the outtakes from the holiday greeting of Dag. <laughs> there, there might be some actually. There is, a, there is a blooper reel. I do have a blooper reel. You do? Yeah. I, we got to get those converted. We got to get those converted. Legacy Box, if you'd like to be a sponsor on. <laughs> <laughs> Stay but, what, is Legacy Box literally just conversion? It's just taking your old media and it's digital digi- conver- digitizing it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Such yeah. a grand name. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's for like also like your old family photos yeah. and stuff, yeah, and yeah, yeah. like if they scan stuff or mm-hmm. yeah, or old like maybe even old, um, you know, like home tamagotchis. Home, home, what are those? <laughs> What's that? The digital pets. <laughs> <laughs> and they send it back a dog. Yeah, <laughs> you send a. <laughs> that they go the other way. <laughs> it went the wrong way. You send them a dog, they send you a tamagotchi. Here's a bearded dragon. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, I have this to do is that. A and my, crazy. In my high school plays. Yes, I'd like to my see my high those. school musicals. Yeah. Yeah. Carousel, uh, South Pacific. You did and, Guys and Dolls, didn't you? And you get your gun. Did not do Guys and Dolls. I thought you did. No, I. I was the the president of the the Royal Mask Society. That was our drama club. <laughs> Yeah. How grand. Uh, very grand. And I, when I was the incoming. And also uh, current. Wear your mask. <laughs> very true. <laughs> M-A-S-Q-U-E. Oh, wear, oh, oh. wear your mask. Wear your mask. Um, I, as the incoming president, I had a meeting with our director. The mm-hmm. guy, it was the priest, Father Sabatini, who directed mm-hmm. all the shows. <laughs> and I, the two that I wanted to do. He said, what shows would you like to do? Mm. And I said, I would love to do The Music Man. And he said, oh, I hate The Music Man. <laughs> and I said, all right. Uh, I'd also like to do Guys and Dolls. He goes, oh, I hate Guys and Dolls too. So basically, he didn't really want to know what you wanted to do. He no, wanted he you not. to say what he wanted to do. I, th- I think he wanted <laughs> me to just be okay with what he wanted to do. <laughs> and what, what we eventually did South Pacific, which was very weird because, and I've talked about this on Freedom, my podcast with Scott Ackerman and Lauren Lapkus. That you're starting soon again. Yes, guys. we're going to get back on it. Um, we They cast a teacher in, in one of the roles, in a romantic leading role. That's wrong. It was so, to this day, I'm That's like, messed why up. did they do that? It's so weird. That's messed up. And it makes me think, did he ask? Did he want to do this? No. It's so weird to He me. did. He wanted to. Right? There's no other explanation. It was a Catholic school. There's no other explanation it's for so it. It's so weird. And they had to have a kiss. Stop they it. They had to fucking have a Are kiss. Are you fucking no. kidding me right now? No. I'm not kidding. I'm livid about it. It's like it's I am. This is demented. so like inappropriate and wrong. Yes. That I like I want to find the whoever played the girl. <laughs> And make sure she's okay as a lady. I, th- man, as a woman. I think about that so often. It's so. I think about that so often. Something's not right there. Because she, at the time, she sort of rolled her eyes about it, like, oh, yeah, he tried to, he tried to put his tongue in my mouth and all this. This is what it's like being a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. what it's like. Exactly. I think about that too. Like her. Even at that age, yes, yes, yes. She was like, eh, "This is, of course, he tried to do this." Yeah, you know? yeah. Wait, in seventh oh. grade, like our our gym teacher, like watched us do jumping jacks. Yeah. And then one day we all revolted and turned our backs doing the jumping jacks. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's like Lysistrata. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> sort of like. <laughs> Yeah, oh, what but world. also that was the same seventh grade teacher I had that um, told us that um, Russia was going to like nuke, nuke us. Great. So like that's probably, that might have been, maybe that's the moment I developed my anxiety disorder, my maybe. generalized anxiety maybe. disorder. I don't think you're supposed to tell a seventh grader that at any moment all of civilization is going to disappear in a, an instant. It was a popular topic back then. Yeah. Yeah. And he was also the same seventh grade teacher. This is a Catholic school, mind you, mm-hmm. that was basically like told the boys, like, don't let the girls like trick you into getting them pregnant or something. <laughs> 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 and like it was all the girls like responsibility to do it. It was like the girls responsibility not to get pregnant by anybody because yeah. it's not nothing. No, no responsibility on the male. You population. know, this is what like red pilling is. This is what it's all about. What is, is that it? The red pill- I don't know what red pill means. It's a matrix the idea, reference. It's a matrix reference, but it's the idea that you take the red pill and you see the truth. And the truth is women actually have all the power. That's what red pill means? Yes. So it's a, it's a genderized thing? It's yeah. about it's about like yeah. rage toward yeah, yeah. the other people opposite use, gender? People use it toward... That was its origin. People use it for just a general like anti-woke like oh i see how it really is you know am i allowed to say that when i saw the matrix in the theater Uh uh-huh that i fell asleep sure are you sure yeah i mean i because i feel like that movie is important to a lot of people it is for sure not i'm not i i think i was a little 
I might have been a little old when The Matrix came out for it to have that impact on me. Like, I remember really enjoying it when so I saw it. So is The Matrix about, like, a, is it misogynistic? No. Oh, so Red Pilling well, was co-opted. Well, I mean, no co-opted. more than any other Hollywood movie. <laughs> so wait, you're, so the Red Pilling thing was co-opted from The Matrix. Yes. It's it was, not about... It was co-opted as a term. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I have a thing, just so you know, maybe not what is about The Matrix 100%, but... If they're like action movies that have a lot of bright light flashing, yeah, it causes me to have like a petite mall seizure where I That's like right. fall, like I instantly and down you go, yeah, like it kind of like hypnotizes my eyes and it and it pushes me into like a like a trance, yeah, and then when it stops, I wake up again, yeah. So I don't know what that is. It's probably something bad. <laughs> <laughs> But have you ever talked to a doctor about it? I don't think there's anything major with it. I think it's just like that's the only thing that it. It's does. like people who bite their nails. Like right. you don't go to a doctor for that. Does it happen when you watch TV? No, because it's not that immersive. Like if anything, it has happened. Like maybe like back in the day before I had like good sunglasses or whatever. If I was driving <laughs> down like a shady like road. But I'm still like awake. Here's what's Jesus. crazy is like so like if you're dri- like if you're driving down like a country road where there's lots of trees and there's like shade and sun and then shade and sun and shade you know and you're going mm-hmm. through and it's like flashing really fast like it's yeah. like flickering yes. at you like that like it flickers like the, like I've gone into like a weird like trance or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then like you like that's never like that long when you're driving. I mean I hope not. <laughs> Jesus. Also. Don't worry, guys. In L.A., there's not that much shade. (laughs) Really? There just isn't. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's mostly like in like if I'm in a dark theater and there's a flickering if there's like flickering action sequences or something, it'll like. Yeah. Well, like I'm sure other people have this. Maybe other people have this. Maybe our listeners are going to tell us. Listeners, we want to hear from you. (laughs) Do you have uh, uh, light seizures? (laughs) Do you have sleepy seizures? Please let us know. I don't know what it is. Everybody has their thing, right? Have you ever looked it up? Yeah, of course. I think it's called Petite Mall. It's like called, okay. or maybe I'm saying, maybe it's not called that. I don't know what it's called. It's called, <laughs> I don't know. Don't go to the Matrix. Mr. Sandman Syndrome. <laughs> it's called, people have like, what? They have narcolepsy. They have like everything. Like there's so many things that you can have. It's true. This, it's a, this it is, is a great time. It is such a mild nuisance. Like, it, like it's so rare. Like it would only yeah. happen like maybe to me like once a year. Like there's only a circumstance that occurs. Well, like, I'm not trying to take it away from you. <laughs> I mean is it – but like is that even worth like seeing a doctor about? Like I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think it's worth mentioning. If you if you are going to the doctor anyway – I think it's. But also I don't have a. I don't go to those kind of. Doc- I don't have a neurologist. I don't go to that kind of doctor. Any doctor I would go to, and I'd say if that was a thing, they would just sit, say go to another specialist or something. Go to some other. I hear you. Well, when you're chasing down medical information, it is a full time job. It's like you're in the matrix. <laughs> And the so wait, robot red, squid is after you. Red pilling is like, okay, I just want to make sure I understand this. Mm-hmm. So like red, like can you use it in a sentence? Because I don't totally grasp why it would come up. I mean. How would it come up? It, it's, well, it's it's an online thing for sure. So like, oh, this like. And it's like I was red pilled and I see that, you know, <laughs> I used to, I used to think that. Uh-huh. You know, women were helpless until I was red pilled, and then I realized that they hold all the cards. Is that what they think? Yeah, 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 yeah. What does that mean? We hold all the because cards? because women choose the mates. We have all of the. We hold all the wealth. We hold you, all the hiring power. I don't know what we have. No, hold. You, you. It's the only. It's, thing a, it's like a sexual thing. It's like a. Yeah, um, well, but they, but they take it. They try, they have these, these tiny minds and they try to make the idea that women decide who is attractive and who is not in terms of being a mate. Okay. That means that they determine all of society. (laughs) They're trying to make this into a bigger. So I read about this, like, um, there's a lot of like, um, men's rights Mm -hmm. activists stuff. Yeah. And I just read, I actually meant to mention on the podcast a a few weeks ago when I came across it, but there, there's this one group in particular where they basically like 
they're like celibate on purpose. Like, wait, no, no. that's not what that's they are. That's monks. That's something You're else. You're thinking of incels. No, that's not what I'm thinking of. They have a nick. They have like M A W G S or whatever. They're like called like Manx or Mox or something. Mm-hmm. It stands for something. Oh my god, this is the this is gonna like. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna take a break in a minute anyway, mm-hmm. and then I can find it. But when I like read about it, I was like. <laughs> Because they have a certain philosophy about women that it was like, okay, fine. Like, <laughs> like go do your, like, whatever. It was extreme, though. But, okay, do you remember any detail? Just that it has four <laughs> initials and it starts with an M. Mm. And it's like a men's rights activist, like, it's encompassed, like, encompassed in the men's rights activist. And it's not MRAs. What are those? Men's rights activists. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no. But what does it mean? That's the thing. Guys, right after this break, no sponsor this week, we'll be right back with information about this amazing group. <laughs> with this, this is why you listen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys, I found it. I found it. It's called MGTOW. MGTOW. <laughs> MGTOW. It's called Men Going Their Own Way. Mm-hmm. And it's a male separatist movement. And they do go. <laughs> they Okay, so they um, their whole thing is just like, I guess, like distancing from women. And they don't like. They don't have sex. They say they go like they they go celibate and they call it going monk. Mm. Okay, and then um, there it has like over thirty three thousand members. Um. Oh, and um, there like some of the topics on their page is like advice on divorcing as cheaply as possible. Um, women who found ways to murder <laughs> the inventive ways to murder their husbands. Um, that sounds fun. <laughs> okay. Um, and then there's like, they have like these videos on YouTube that have over like 90 million views. And it's like, smart men don't get married is like one of them. And then and married men don't get smart. <laughs> and then criticize her and she will destroy your career is one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, uh, criticize her and she'll destroy your career. Yeah. What, and then, what jobs do uh, these guys have where this is happening? Uh, I don't know. It's like I read this whole article. So I'm, I'm at, oh, so it even says in here when she's taken the red pill. It does say um, this is the article I read two weeks ago, y'all. Yeah, it was yeah. in The Guardian. It's by, um, I should give the credit because that's a big thing. Um, it's by Laura Bates. And it's in the Guardian, and it was it came out a couple weeks ago, and it's uh it's a profile on her discovery of this of this group. <laughs> so basically, it's like you take the red pill. I guess I did know about. I just don't really like. I'm reading it, you know. So you reject long term relationships, <laughs> um, and then you have to do economic disengagement, reducing taxation as far as possible in order to avoid paying towards the support of other groups sure. like single mothers. Yeah. Um, it's all about like limited government and all, you know, <laughs> so they also have a governmental <laughs> philosophy <laughs> in addition to, in addition to trying to spend as little time around women as possible. We also feel like small government is good. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I'm fiscally conservative and uh, <laughs> socially insane. <laughs> Isn't that so many people right now? That my girlfriend. Like so many. You're not wrong. Well, I want my own red pill. I want to see the truth. What's the truth? I think that you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do we- because like I, I live, in, about this I live in reality. Yeah. Because I live in reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't understand. I don't understand it. I just like was reading it like scientifically, but I know there are men out there that really hate women. Like yeah. I've encountered it on the internet. Yeah. A bunch, and it's so. 
sad to me because I think it, there is a pathology there mm-hmm. of like where the person has like, they just like have no balance in their, mm-hmm. in their value system. Yeah. There's a, lot <laughs> no. of, there's a lot of fucked up people out there. There's a lot <laughs> of like fucked up weird. people out there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is very weird. <laughs> MGTOW. MGTOW. MGTOW, everybody. <laughs> Listen, I I don't even know, like, men's rights, like, their whole thing. Like, if men's rights were being jeopardized, I would support a men's <laughs> rights. But the problem is the, <laughs> there is, like, a system in place where mostly white men make all the rights. Yes, of course. They make the law. They enforce the yes. law. They pass yeah. the policy. What's so frustrating about about yeah. this time that we're in yeah. and that, that we've been in for as long as we've been alive mm-hmm. uh, is that, but especially now when more people have voices than than used to, um, which is one. Yeah, of the, they have platforms on YouTube, yeah, or which on is, Instagram or TikTok. That, yes, that's one of the benefits of of the of the internet is that a lot more people are being heard by uh, the, the the greater population than were before. Mm-hmm. They're not. Be, they're, it's not as easy to shout people down as mm-hmm. it was. Agreed. The frustrating thing about that is that people like this, mm-hmm. like let's say one percent of them truly believe they have it in their minds like no this is real okay that's one percent or that dumb they think it they think it's real like they're living in a reality where they are feeling marginalized by women to feel they feel marginalized by women by the existence of women yeah they heard somebody say a thing and they're like yeah that's right the the really frustrating thing is the people that know that that's all bullshit yeah and are pretending that it's not all bullshit You'll, because you can never saying, get them to admit, yeah, I know. You're saying there's always like a snake oil salesman at the he- yes, head of it, like, like an Alex Jones or something. The, the, or the like people a- that are in fucking charge of things, like they, they, they know that there's white supremacy. They know that all this stuff. They oh, know that it's saying. enshrined in in the way in the fabric of the world, and that they're like, well, I that, don't, I don't see the, any, I don't see where there's racism. It's like, well, yes, no, like you William do. Barr said there wasn't racism, so yeah, I guess exactly. there's not exactly. <laughs> And it's like, like I would that, listen to William Barr. Like I sh- hate William Barr like, so much. That's like, the shit that is so frustrating. It's like, well, I guess you're just going to lie, and I can't get you to say. Well, because because gaslighting is a is actually, I think, an effective method of brainwash. It's like, maddening. Yeah, it's maddening. But it's a way to it's a way to gain control over something. I think one on one. Yeah, it is a way to to control an individual. Yes. A mass gaslighting when people are just refusing to tell the truth. But there's like three people that will buy it, so they do it anyway. Well, there's, but they're not buying it. They're just going along with the the thing that lines up with their way of thinking. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not. You're not like people like William Barr are not convincing. He's the intellectually people, people who are marginalized by racism that there's no racism. No, he's just uh, speaking to like the three people. That want to hear that there's no such thing as racism. Well, certainly more than three. Well, what I'm saying is three yes. out of six or three out of seven or whatever. Mm, I think it's more like nine out of ten. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's like 31 percent, 35 percent. I don't know, man. I mean, you you get people that are even that consider themselves liberal that are like, you know, racism <gasps> is, is. Oh, cuckoo. Wait, y'all you know cuckoo? what cuckoo? You're right. Racism is crazy. Yeah, tell him, Cuckoo. Also, I hope he's going to get investigated. I think Adam Schiff said something today about it. I'm going to have to look at the news. I've been sort of keeping myself away from some stressors. Yes, exactly. I just think, like, if you, like being intellectually dishonest, like, I totally think it's pathological. Mm-hmm. But, and then you have to wonder, like, well, do they actually think it, privately i know what you're saying like they're working it up but like are they just deluding themselves into thinking well, it because I, they I want think, power or yeah. do they honestly think it i think well i think it's probably both i think some people are some people are racist enough to think like i'm not racist <laughs> and some people are like yeah i hate black people 
but I'm going to say that I'm not. I, I'm going to say I don't have a racist bone in my body. Always beware of that phrase. Whenever that phrase is uttered, <laughs> people are talking about a racist. I think that we all are. We all have implicit bias. Of course we do. No matter what. Yes. Because we live in America. Yes. But I also think that like a lot of times when you're trying to get people to recognize racism, mm-hmm. it's not always about the individual. Like it's about it's about the system or it's about it's about like the practices. Yeah. It's about the way that inequities have piled on cumulatively yes. over however many hundred yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And people who don't acknowledge that seems demented to me because it's like, people, what are you talking here's about? Here's what's crazy. How do you not what's live so, in this world? Exactly. What's so maddening is that more people are willing to admit, yes, racism exists. There is such a thing as racism, but it's not systemic. It's not like our our country was built on that. Like they, people, For some people, that's too far to go because I think, I think even if they are – if you want to say that they're well-meaning people, it's too huge a, a concept. Like it would ruin. It's everything like saying look at, look look for the edge of the galaxy or something, or like look for like you just well, can't. It's like, like it's, it's overwhelming. Like, here's what I think it's like. It's like if, overwhel- you, if you were told by your parents yeah. that you had a happy childhood, but you know that you had a shitty childhood, mm-hmm. but you don't want to, you don't want to admit, you don't want to admit that. And it's easy when somebody's telling you, like, oh, great, you don't have to admit that. I'm here to back you up and say it was great. We did everything right, and we really took care of you. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's just, like, so hard to talk about because (sighs) it's just, like, hard to talk about it. Yeah. It's, like, hard to talk about it because it, it makes you feel helpless in a way of, like, well, you just have to do your best on a daily basis and, like, call shit out. But then you call shit out to people and they don't want to fucking see it. Yeah. It's it's unfortunately. So I guess true. like some people leave this MGTOW group because they end up getting girlfriends. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was like sort of like the, the like like the way like <laughs> Hey sorry guys, I got like I got re blue pilled. They they get like they get into it young, right? Like they're online and they're looking for communities yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And then and then it's like, wait a minute. I want to have a girlfriend. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, you know yeah. when like you're looking for an identity, like you're in your twenties and you're like, not all of them are that obviously they're like, how do you cheat your ex-wife out of divorce money? But like, <laughs> <laughs> but people are also looking for, they're looking for a, um, people are looking for an explanation as to why they're unhappy. And the best thing you can ever find is that it's someone else's fault. If you can find a website that says, actually, there's a lot of us that feel unhappy the way you do, and it's not our fault. It's these it's, th- these darn gals. Here's the thing. I think groups like this are... Great. <laughs> well, I am a First Amendment absolutist. <laughs> I do love the First Amendment. But I also think you should educate yourself. But here's the thing. Before you educate yourself. <laughs> You better educate yourself before you check you, Kate. No, reducate like red pill. Oh, I get it. Okay. Here, here's the thing. If I'm a if I'm an unhappy man who has been destroyed <laughs> by a woman. Uh-huh. Like say okay, say my name is Norman. Okay. I'm forty two. I live with my mother. <laughs> uh, you can't see her right now. She's very tired. <laughs> Now, okay, maybe would you like my to name. Check into my motel? Okay, maybe my name <laughs> is Manny. Manny. My name is Manny. Okay. I live with my brothers, Joe and Jack. We <laughs> fix cars. Okay. <laughs> my name is Ted. Okay. And I okay. have some talks. I oh, put on regular. See? Okay, bye. No, you're doing. It. Uh, David. My name is David. Okay. My name is David. I'm 42. Okay. Okay. I'm deeply <laughs> deep. Uh oh, uh oh. Are you are you fading? Are you fading? <laughs> no, I'm fine. Okay, David, forty two. David, forty two. You're deeply unhappy. Yes, I have been destroyed <laughs> by this ex, this bitch, 
ex-wife. <laughs> you criticized her and she ruined your career. <laughs> no, the ex-wife. She's a bitch ex-wife. Right. Oh, yeah. You think it's out of character for a bitch ex-wife to ruin your career? <laughs> she ruined everything. <laughs> she said I did this and I didn't or whatever. So now I'm going to join MGTOW. Okay? Yeah. And all of a sudden... I'm like, oh my God, MGTOW, y'all are awesome. You totally get me. <laughs> like, I'm going to totally hide my money and like whatever. So she can't take me that bitch ex-wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm starting to be radicalized into believing that I can trust men and distrust only women. Yeah. Right? Right. So now you have become and like made yourself. So now your critical thinking skills have gone out the window. Like mm -hmm. you've totally like everything should be on an individual basis. You should be filtering things through your own personal experience. Right. You should be like, you know, kind of like questioning things, skeptical of things, um, wondering if this path is better than that path or whatever. But because now you're in this like current you're in a, a water current of like men are trustworthy in this group mm -hmm. and women are the devil or whatever. Right. So it's like you have now made yourself totally vulnerable as a human being yeah. to hucksters and con artists and whatever. Absolutely. Because you have given your fucking brain over. That's right. It's just like any other thing. It's like it's like any other thing. It's like cults, like, you know, yes. The Vow on HBO or whatever. Oh, people did say they wanted us to talk about The Vow. Oh, uh, The Vow <laughs> is, yeah. yes, we're really enjoying The Vow. On HBO. It's a documentary yeah. series. Why don't we skip to recommendations? It's about that time anyway. Is it? Yeah. Oh. How did that happen? Because I... Okay. Because what? Because I don't feel like um, the timer, like I looked over and now the timer is gone. Uh, the timer, you looked over and the timer is gone. But but was it where, it was at the end? It, the timer went all the way down. Oh, it did? And now I'm looking at the counter on the, okay. on the, the recorder. Well, I'm just saying like <laughs> in, in general, like you should try to like formulate your own opinions like in the moment like exactly. you can't just be like this person is this or this person that's yes. my whole life what i'm saying is a cautionary tale if you want to join migtow yeah. and give them your money or whatever or watch their videos and click on their you know don't skip ads at the beginning of their <laughs> youtubes or whatever fine fine but i'm also saying like you need to diversify your information sources because uh, agreed agreed well, anytime you keep referring to one person, it's like when people were were all about that Jordan Peterson guy. Now, who is he again? Oh, Remind me of him. He Canadian, is, right? Yes, he's, Canadian. He's some Canadian. He's academic. the incel dude. Is he the incel dude? I don't know what you mean by the incel dude. Okay, keep going, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I don't know who you are, dude. Sorry. <laughs> he was just another dum dum uh, who was, you know. Uh, telling men it's not their fault and you know all that shit he had dumb ideas and he is part of the the intellectual dark web and blah 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 and i think now he's uh, in the hospital with covid <laughs> no way <laughs> yeah, I think so. well i'm sorry i don't know who you are hugest stay of home fan. sorry to this man <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest stay of home fan as as anyway i'm glad we <laughs> we shoehorned him him in before the end of the episode um, so let's talk about the vow. It's as always weird little dude who's the cult leader that everyone's drawn to. Okay, so first of all, I listen. I I learned about Nexium about two years ago yeah. because there was this. Um, speaking of Canadian um, <laughs> podcast series SOC. called Escaping Nexium, mm -hmm. and because I like my true crime podcasts. I got myself up into that one mm -hmm. and it was riveting because I didn't know. I think I had seen something in the New York times about like a sex call with like branding. Like it was in the New York times. Mm -hmm. And cause I knew like Alison Mack from, um, super something. Bless you. Thank you. 
that she was like named in like I Supergirl, knew Supergirl, right? Yeah, like yeah. so I knew some of that. Oh, wait, st- no, was she on Smallville? I think so. Yes. So, um the um podcast was fantastic. I can recommend that for sure. Like if right. like I would actually suggest starting with Escaping Nexium and listening to it before watching The Vow on HBO Max mm-hmm. because it does give you like a good foundation into what this crazy criminal enterprise was all about. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But you had not you didn't know anything. I knew a little bit. I knew a little bit. Okay. Um, like, did you know about the brand and the shape of the brand and what that it I, kn- that okay. I knew about the brand. I did not know about the shape of the brand. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like cults are very, cults are very scary. And it's always fascinating to me to, to see the story of one unfold and hear from the people that were involved. The other thing that we are watching is Love Fraud. Oh, right? we just started Love Fraud uh, on Showtime. We're two episodes in on Showtime. It's, uh, it's really good. Amazing, yeah. I like that docuseries Loves Fraud. It's about a con man. Speaking of, because cult leaders are con people. Yeah. Um, but this guy is like a lone wolf kind of dude who... Serial bigamist and... He's, yeah, he wild. strikes and then is in the wind, yeah. you know. And, um, and it's, very, it's very visually arresting the way they... they I like the way the that story. they are telling the story. I yeah. like the way that they're like doling out the information because it's taking you on such a journey yeah. that you don't really know where it's going to go or anything. Um, the Vow on HBO, I know where it goes. I know the outcome of that That's story. Right. Well, because I followed it and it was a lot more high profile because the expose... There were also a thing about Nexium. There were... Um, there are like billionaires involved. <laughs> Yeah. Like they yeah, targeted yeah, yeah. like air heirs heiresses and stuff. Yeah. Um specifically. And anyway, um so wait, what do you think of the vow? Of the show? I like it. Okay. I think it's well done. Yeah. Cuz I had a friend reach out and she's like, "I'm confused. I don't know what's happening." And I was like, "Why don't you listen to the podcast?" And I sent her the podcast. Yeah, I I don't know. I I didn't understand the source of her confusion, our friend. Mm-hmm. Um, because I felt like I, it's not, I didn't know a ton about it, but watching it, I think they lay it all out pretty I well. I don't think they tell the story as um, compellingly as that other one we're watching, the fraud one, because I think... That's got a lot of bells and whistles. It's got a lot of bells and whistles, and also the vow, they're using recorded conversations, and they're showing reenactments, and sometimes you don't know what the reenactment is and what is actual footage of the time right. that it was happening, and maybe that's what well, proved the, con- confusing about the it. The reenactments, they're not full-on reenactments. They're like showing them in their present day and then doing narration over it, so yeah. you think like they're going through the emotion that they're describing like right that minute. Right. As right, opposed right. to like this happened two years ago. Yeah, or because whatever. apparently all of these people recorded all of their phone conversations all of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which yeah. made me think maybe I should start doing that. It's like Michael Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> I just started his book. Oh boy, that guy. I don't know. I I think. Did that, you pay for it or did you get it from the library? Did you think I was going to wait twelve weeks to get it? <laughs> By the way, I feel happy paying for it. I paid for Mary Trump's book. Mm-hmm. I paid for Michael Cohen. Mary Trump, not a criminal, though. <laughs> Michael Cohen is a criminal who is taking who is taking his punishment and admitted. He admitted to lying to Congress. Okay, great. So, just like I think in... After he got caught. Well, it's not like he got away with it. He was like, you know what? I got to say, I lied to you, Congress. But if you're, if you have any interest in cults, like this is an interesting story in a way. Uh, hey, that's a different topic. Is whether, it? Whether it's interesting or not. What do you mean? You're saying I shouldn't have paid for his book because I'm he's, saying fuck that guy. <laughs> he's a horrible person. He he knows he's hor- he admits mm, you, he got caught. He got caught. No, the scales fell from him, his eyes after he got caught. But sometimes you have to get caught to know that you're following a fucking mob boss. Oh, he knew the he knew the whole time. He knows he's a knows. piece of shit. This guy. I don't know. I don't. I can't put him in that category. One hundred percent, and I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Because he didn't have to go in front of Congress and say Trump will not 
leave office. <laughs> well, but that, he didn't have to do that. He was trying to like, wasn't that him trying to get a deal? No, he had already been sentenced, sentenced, or convicted, or something. He wasn't saying that for any other reason other than he was like, this guy has now become the president. What the fuck have I done? According to the book. Mm. According to the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical of his road to Damascus moment. Are you really? Yeah. Why, yes, of course I am. <laughs> Is that hard to believe? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I'd have dinner with him. Oh. I would not have dinner with anyone named Trump except for maybe Mary Trump. What would, well, I know I've asked you this before, and I think it's the craziest question. Uh-oh. If you showed up at a dinner party and they and then suddenly Donald Trump was there and they sat you next to Donald Trump. <laughs> I was like, what would you do? How would you react? How would you deal with that situation? I mean, honestly, in my in my fantasy of that. What I would, what I hope I would do is yeah. make it so miserable that he leaves. I don't think like that. if I just sat down next to him. But and your I was friends like, with the, your you're friends a piece with the, of shit. Your friends with the host. What? <laughs> okay. So. Or was a new couple? Fr- okay, here's what happened. <laughs> we meet a new couple friend. <laughs> this is like how Hugh Jackman is friends with Jared and Ivanka. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That bummed me out when I heard that. We meet- like we don't talk about politics. I'm like, come on. Uh, you meet a new couple friend, and they're like, "Oh my god, we love you guys." You think you're sort of like in the same circles, but you're kind of like removed a little bit. And then they're like, "Oh my god, we're having a dinner party. We're having a dinner party." But you go to the dinner party, and it's like eclectic. It's like a sure, eclectic. sure. Like okay, like Kara Sedgwick and Kevin. Um, bacon, bacon are there. Tony Orlando is there. So, and I'm like, one I, of Don. I would be like so excited. <laughs> one of Don. What does yeah. that mean? That why the other one of Don stayed home. Oh, there was two Don. Wasn't invited. Okay, so I'm like, oh, I'm like so we get there early, and it's like Kevin Bacon and Kara Sedgwick, and we're like, oh my gosh, like they're just so like charming, <laughs> and then another couple comes in, and it's like, um, <laughs> or it's like Mr. T, Mr. T comes in. <laughs> Cause like he lives in, he lives in Los Feliz and we're like, Oh my God, this is so fun. Like, can you believe? And then another couple comes is just the neighbors. There's like these like sort of unsuspecting, like every man and woman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we're like all of a sudden, and then like our final guests are going to be here any minute. And then it's, um, and then it's Donald Trump and Melania. <laughs> and you've already had like a glass of wine and eaten cheese and crackers and like, and you guys are like, and everyone's laughing. Everyone's laughing and having, having fun. A great time. Oh my god, Mr. T is telling like the dishiest, like the dishiest stories about Dirk Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and then like all of a sudden they're like, okay, Donald, Donald, and- our final guys running a little bit late. And they're like, oh, D and D and Mel are going to be here soon. And then D and Mel, and they were like, oh, oh, where do they live? And they're like, oh, they live in New York, but they're visiting and, you know. It sounds like you've thought about this like, no, at great length. I have not. I just thought about, well, no, I thought about the being seated next to him. at mm. a, I've thought about that before. Right. But I've not thought about the circumstances okay, in, which, so, okay. in which it's the most. I don't, know why, I don't know why you're setting this up for because me. Because I'm setting it up in a way where you are faced with real world behavior and decisions yeah how do you compose yourself how do you i would say to him i fucking hate you you're a dumb monster and i think you should leave this dinner party why not just leave be like you know what um our host sally and i guess because i really want to say to him in at the I expense fucking hate of you, your you're a dumb monster at the expense, yes at the expense be, of those hosts. And I'll, and I'll, by the way i'll never see those people again I'll never speak to Mr. T again. <laughs> well, what if Mr. T is like, I don't like him either, but, you know, dude, that was rude. Like. I would say to Mr. T, I pity you, fool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? What would you do? Here's what I think I would do. I would just be like, you know what? I suddenly have a migraine. And. Why? Why not just say? Because I'm in the home 
of somebody else. Like I'm not in a public venue. I, I understand that, but they, but this is like one of the most monstrous people. And then what in I our would, lifetimes. No, but here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have a migraine, and I'm just gonna be like, Sally. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I, you know, Paul. Uh, Paul's gonna take me home. Oh, you don't talk to Tim. Very telling. And um, yeah. I've Tim's been, a, Tim's the one that went, Tim's the one that went to UPenn with him. Tim's the one that they're all college buddies. Yeah, <laughs> it's our new couple friends. Right in their eighties. Their <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Sally's younger. How much it's his younger? Second wife. How much younger is she? She's in her fifties. Okay. Okay. And so, and then I'm like, I have to go. <laughs> like, I suddenly have to go. It's a migraine. I have to go. Uh-huh. And then um, we walk out, and then I'm like, and then we're standing on the sidewalk, and I'm like, what the fuck? Was that, did that really just Wait, happen? Was this me? I'm saying this to you. I'm saying to that. So I, did I not, in your version, I didn't get to call him a piece of no, shit? No, in your version, you have to whisk me awake from my migraine. Like, I suddenly. No, that's your version. Yeah, my version. Yes. So this is my version. It's going to end well. Listen. So we get outside. I'm like, oh, my, like, what the fuck? Like, was that really? <laughs> Dean Miller, fucking Donald, and like I, I feel sick. I feel sick. So we're walking to our car. Kira and Kevin come out in this version, uh huh. Because they're like, we don't want a part of this either, right? The four of us go to the bar, the neighborhood bar, mm-hmm. and become best friends. So just so we to, become friends with the Kira's. Just to be clear, yeah. Mr. T stays inside. <laughs> he might stay. That's disappointing. But he loves the he loves the uh, he loves Sally so much. He would never. He's so polite. He would never be. <laughs> or maybe he does like say, "Dude, you 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 fucked us. <laughs> you fucked us. Do you have any like?" And then it's a lively dinner conversation. <laughs> <laughs> A lively dinner conversation where Donald Trump was like, I did not. <laughs> and he's like, no, man. <laughs> no, I'm great. No, you fucked us. Like, I had friends that died of COVID. Uh, you know, like, you like you could not say, like, Black Lives Matter. Like, what? And then he's like, oh, it was all a show. Uh, you know, I, I, was on a re- I was on The Apprentice. It was all, like, I'm a let show. Me, let me ask you something, though. <laughs> let me ask you something. Yeah. Don't you like my version a little bit? Like if we're at a, It makes we were, me feel hold bad on, for hold Sally. On, hold on. <sighs> you choose Sally over me? It's not about you versus Sally. It's about like It sounds like it we've is. Been pe- we've been pegged. They couldn't tell us that we de- barely know these people. They invite a monster into their home. Because they can't mention who Dean Mel are because every time people leave. Yes. So <laughs> why are they still friends with him? <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> If we were at a dinner party and Donald Trump was there <laughs> and I walked up to him and I said, I fucking hate you. You're a piece of shit. You're a dumb monster. I think I would enjoy it. Yes, of course. I would you enjoy would. it. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> okay, it. everybody. But I'm just saying, here's the thing. Even though I would enjoy it, like I would not personally do it that way. No, that's personally. what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got to wrap this up. Thank you for listening, everybody. We are at Stay F. Homkins on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Stay F. Homkins at gmail.com if you want to write us a letter. We love hearing from everybody. Especially, like, our fans, love re- re- they reach out to us. And um, this past week, we even got, like, a fun, like, remix song of a uh, segment from Oh, our- who sent that to us? It's in our, our- we're going to play it on the end uh, of this episode, aren't we? Yes. We want to give that person a shout out. Yeah. But- it, uh, it was, like, so funny. It was like my favorite. I played it like 10 times for a paw. Um, his name is you, Jason Anthony Harris. I feel like you played it once for me and then you played it nine times for yourself. I heard you. I okay, caught you I listening did. to it. Many <laughs> he walked times. in the room and I was But it is. To it's it. really, really funny. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> so we're going to play that for Wait, you. Am now. I allowed to say his full name? Is that okay to say? Yeah, he posted okay. it on Twitter. He put, yeah, okay, Jason Anthony. Thank you, Jason Anthony. Yes, we love it. Uh, uh, we love, so, yeah, we're at stayofhomkins at gmail.com and, um, on, and you know where we are on our socials, and yes. we will be. We'll be back next week, Hopefully. it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. So, until then, Jason. no, into the microphone. <laughs> Pick your head up off the table. <laughs> Sally, I apologize. Sally, hey, Sally. Sally, I apologize. You have better friends. <laughs> Sally, I apologize. Look, I get it. He Tim, to- you worthless cuck. You can't stand up to your <laughs> what, your bitch wife. All right. So Paul, so my husband joined MGTOW. Uh, it happened over the course of this episode. All right. Stay, stay safe. safe. 
stay sane, sane and, and stay, stay home. home. <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't know anything. What are you talking about? You don't about? know nothing. You don't know anything. What are you talking about? Who hey, you think you are? You dumb. Why don't you go kiss Boo Radley with that mouth? Why don't you go tweet at Boo Radley? You, you don't, don't know, know anything. anything. If you think you know so much, you, 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 you don't know anything. You ain't nothing. You ain't nobody. But, but, you don't know Who you think you are?